So this is uh, the evolution of data architecture. Um, we've come a long way from the 1970s where data architecture is really just operational reporting, uh, but we quickly found that was too limited. You're only reporting on a single internal operational application at a time for the most part. So in the 90s, we introduced data warehousing uh, and that's great. Now we can analyze uh, all of our data uh, in an integrated way. Well, that's proved to be too costly, too slow, or as the data mesh people say, too monolithic. So in the 2010s, we moved to big data and introduced data lakes uh, and now data lake houses. Um, and that's been good, a lot more data, a lot more volume, uh, but a little bit ungoverned. So a lot of our lakes became data swamps. <laughs> so now we're in the 2020s and data mesh and data fabric are on the ascendance, right? And the big change here is that the first three eras of data architecture are all IT driven and centralized for the most part. Whereas data mesh and data fabric are business driven and decentralized. Uh, so very, very different approach. Um, but we do have to ask <laughs> because every architecture has its downsides and limitations what's gonna be the downside or limitation here? Now I have my thoughts, some of which were preconceived and probably overly biased, but let's talk about them. First, what is the market activity around these things? So this was uh, a chart from um, the CDAO survey done annually by New Vantage Partners. And as you can see here, the data mesh and data fabric um, are not really doing well compared to other data analytics investments. Um, from a number one investment priority, it's only got 7.3% of CDAO saying that's that's their top priority, but 41% uh, saying they're investing in it, right? Uh, but what is interesting here is look at data products. Um, they're, they're way up there, they're number two. Uh, and this is interesting. When we first conceived of this tech vent, it was just data mesh and data fabrics. But then we realized that there was a trend afoot and people are very interested in data products because that is the primary output of a data mesh and a data fabric. Um, so now let's separate data mesh and data fabric. Uh, Gartner thinks, is very bullish on data fabric, thinks 80% of CDAOs will have adopted a data fabric by 2025. Um, and then data mesh, I couldn't find what Gartner thought about data mesh, but we did our own little LinkedIn poll earlier this year. And a lot of people are still on the sidelines trying to learn about it, trying to see what others are doing with it. And we'll find out very shortly <laughs> what one company is doing with it. 13% uh, can't wait to implement. Uh, Paul, you fall into that group. And then 13% say it's a disaster in the making. And I must admit, I fell into that group initially. Uh, but I do think there's a lot of potential with the data mesh uh, if it's done right. Um, 